I know you don't get away that easy. Before you leave, anybody got any questions for Tom? There's a lady at the back there, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I wouldn't get, I think the business plan is more important for you rather than the investor. So in terms of anyone who's read my 40 page business plan, I think the answer is zero. Um, so in terms of who's seen my presentation, which basically details the key points, quite a few. But, off, but actually in the main, when I go into an investor meeting, I go into the investor meeting with my laptop closed and see where the conversation is going to go. Um, but the important part of the business plan is for you to understand what your milestones are, you to understand what your deliverables are, so that you can communicate them and you can have those key points to go back to. So, you know, in terms of how I did the numbers, when I first started in 2008, yes, my numbers are a five-year plan, and that's a massive, enormous spreadsheet, which I still use to forecast with. But in terms of what the uh, investors are looking for, they're looking for somebody they think are credible. So they're, they're basically looking to have a conversation with you, get on with you, trust you, have confidence in you. So I wouldn't get too hung up on, am I gonna present this massive document for them to read? It's about of having, making that connection first and having all of that information ready for them to read, but also be, then being on, totally on top of your numbers because you've built that plan and you know when they ask you, well, how much are you gonna make in year two? you can basically reel them off straight away, bang, bang, bang. Because they're only interested in, they've got short space of time, they're interested in keeping, they're interested in, and by doing the business plan, you then know those numbers. Thank you, and the second question is, uh, you said um, try to first talk with some potential customers. Yep. So, uh, have you done any survey kind of, you know, as you're going to talk with potential customers, or maybe you can do some service and just put it yeah, so absolutely. I mean, for me, my route to market was by getting retailers to become my customers. So in the early days, I, I went and talked to lots of people in terms of trend analysts about what they thought this would look like for the consumer. But I also went to some internet um, retailing conferences and met e-commerce directors from different retailers and spoke to them directly. So I met the e-commerce director of the House of Fraser and the operations guy, talked to them about what they thought about my idea, what, what would be the key issues for them. So one you know, key issue that came up straight away was uh, we don't want to have to spend money twice to photograph all our clothes. That was a key issue. So you know, under, you, un, therefore I understood that very quickly and clearly early on that that was something that I was going to be able to basically cut and uh, create a business model that would take care of that. Um, I also basically sort of met other people in the space. So, for example, I did meet Martha Lane Fox at, you know, to understand what would be the sort of sales process to go into someone like a Marks and Spencers or a big high street retailer. Um, and it was a case of, well, very conservative, take forever, I would avoid them, come to them last. So, understanding, therefore, amongst the retailer spectrum of who would I target to get a deal and what would the sales cycle look like, that brought me then to a very narrow and concrete um, goal of this was the customer I, or retailer I needed to get because they would hit the sweet spot of the right consumers, they were start up, made decisions very fast, they were technology focused, uh, strong on experimentation. So by basically trying to understand how the different retailers operated and doing that discussion with people who are working in the field, I got a really clear picture of the market. Yeah, I mean, my, my philosophy has been that um, the only people to be scared about are people who've got the time, effort, and care. I mean, you're doing it, so why is somebody going to drop whatever they're doing to try and copy and do whatever you're doing? And if your thing is going to be successful, then it's got to be difficult and hard. 
and um, therefore again they're not going to be able to just take your idea and run with it and if it is that simple that it's just an idea then for me it sort of fails that test of defendable technology and, uh, it, it means that we must be get everything ready and maybe we must start it out there already and before talking to the investors. No, I would say you've just got to have confidence that you've got the right team, you've got the right um, technology approach to execute. That's what they want. So, um, you know, I, I think it's the same with all things. Like even if it's the case of you, you, you're a script writer and somebody comes along and says, oh, we should write a story about Assange for WikiLeaks. Well, anybody could write a story about Assange for WikiLeaks but so you can have the idea, somebody else can listen to your idea and go and execute it. They go and execute it better than your script. They sell that script, that becomes a Hollywood movie. So you've got to have that confidence that you are the right execution team to deliver what the idea and concept that you want to deliver. And from my perspective, open and transparent and talking to as many people as possible is better than the alternative. Thank you very much.